Anyways, do you guys think I should do that more often? Where I just like narrate every decision I make in the game? By the way, when I opened League today, I got um a warning from Riot that said that I was using... That I got multiple reports for uh, using um, the chat in like toxic ways, and I'm like, I don't chat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've just been reported a shit ton for playing Smite Kane Top, and Riot was like, erm, no be mean. <laughs> oh, hi Pantheon. So we're gonna let Pantheon full walk to the wave here. I want to avoid what happened with Trinomir, so we're gonna let Pantheon com completely show on the wave. And then we're gonna invade for wave number two. Because I don't want I don't want a repeat of what happened with Trinomir, where he just like sacked the entire first wave to zone me off of the second wave. That really sucked. Anyways, again, if you're wondering why I sacked the entire first wave like this when Pantheon stops me. Uh, to that I respond, try to fight Pantheon level 1 and see what happens. Now that being said, if you want to take Conqueror, maybe it's actually possible. But not with not with this setup. With this setup, you can't fight shit level 1, so. So Pantheon is being a goofy goofball and, and actually... Okay, he actually went back. Yeah, if Pantheon continued to stay missing, uh, I would have probably executed under the assumption that he was coming to kill me. Okay, so here's the Shivana. Uh, we see her on the ward, so we get to see exactly how she moves. Whether she goes to Krugs or not. Okay, so she went to Krugs, so we can proxy one more wave and then execute. But we're 100% executing here. There's no world where we don't execute here. Because Shivana will always come up to try to kill us after taking that. So now ideally we're going to start this second wave, and if I have the timing right, Shivana should be on Scuttle right now and not on her Krugs. Got Flash and Ignite, and cancelled his reset, and he lost the Cannon Wave. It's worth. Alright, same shit as before, only this time it's even worse for him, because he's gonna lose this wave too. Pantheon should have never stopped his base there. Same thing here. By the way, if Pantheon starts walking over to me, we're just gonna stack these two minions. Doesn't look like he- no, it looks like he is actually. No, he gave up. Okay. Yeah, one or two minions isn't worth dying for. In fact, sometimes if they contest, it's better to just ditch the entire wave and go for the next one. But like, again, like, I, I sacked the first wave, we didn't get all of that one wave when he killed me, and yet here we are, 55 CS at, at 6 minutes. Like, I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, like, sacking minions really isn't that bad. Like, there's so much farm to get. Like, imagine if, if you have to sack a wave four different times, and they're all cannon waves, that's 28 farm, right? If you, if you told me that I could have 122 farm at 15 minutes every single game, I would be like, hell yeah. And that's like worst case scenario for sacking waves. So like, sacking waves is completely fine. Like, you only end up losing like 20 farm from it. 20 farm in like a couple of plates. And in return, you get to be in the position that I'm in, where I can kind of consistently get to my first item every game. So that's why I play like this. Because it's like, it's, it's pretty consistent. And the only way that it's not consistent is if, like, Shivana and Malzahar throw everything they have to try to stop me. And in that case, my jungler and my mid laner and my bot lane in theory because they there's no jungle pressure should all be ahead so usually i would sack this wave uh but i saw shivana the top side so i'm not going to and pantheon's impatient and he just queued the wave twice so we're not even gonna lose anything there's no way he actually resets here right what a goofball all right so we can't push turret here very important against pantheon you cannot push turret here because he'll just hold on your face if you think dying for the plate is worth then like by all means but He's planning on ulting that wave, so what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna walk right past it. Yep, look at that. See? There it is. And if he wants to flash for us, that's fine. Now that I have Eclipse and he has no flash, we should be able to trade for our form pretty easily. And then once we've got form, we start winning. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna grab Exhaust here. Because I do want to trade with him. But I don't want to get insta one-shot, so...
Nice. That's gonna give me the majority of my form bar, by the way. Check this out. Yeah, look at that. I would say the Pantheon lane has gone fantastic so far, and my Ezreal is actually stomping the way that my bot lane should be when I play like this. You need to be a little bit careful here. I don't have exhaust this time. And I have no form yet. One more trade will get me it, though. There's, there's absolutely no rush here. One more, like, slightly longer trade than that. But yeah, see? Look, look how close that got me. That was a WQ, and it got me almost almost a, a quarter of my form bar. We could actually probably um, auto-attack ult and then EQ out after he stuns. And that would give it. Yep. Nice, good stuff. We have form now. And now that we have form, uh, we can probably just kill the Pantheon. Do you need to be a little bit careful? Uh, he's level up, and Pantheon getting the 11, the level 11 breakpoint is really big since he gets a lot of armor pen for it. So we'll have to be a tad careful, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we win at this point. Okay. We went there because Pantheon um, had full passive stacks and he queued the minion wave, so he had no stacks. So I knew that that was an angle to all in. So this game is is currently extremely stable, uh, and whenever there's a game state that's stable, uh, that's the perfect time to buy jungle pet. So I know a lot of people ask me like, when do you buy jungle pet? It's when the game state is like this. Not only is the game stable, but we have a perfect reset for it. Check it out. I've got less than 50 gold. And once you have the jungle pet, uh, it's important to know that you're not gonna until the 20 minute mark. You're not going to get very much gold from minions, however, this late into the game, you'll get a lot of XP still. Like, at this point I'm probably getting like 86% XP from minions, and it's going to tick over to 93% soon. So there's not actually a problem with clearing waves, that really sucks that my Kaiser just got multiple shutdowns. But yeah, so I'm going to get 13 reduced gold from each minion here. It's always minus 13 flat, it's not a percentage, uh, from those minions until the 20 minute mark, but I get the majority of the XP from it, which is really all that I care about. Alright, we now have access to all of Shivana's camp respawn timers, so we'll be able to start pressuring those. Like, ideally what happens here is that we're constantly playing on this side of the map, and then every time Shivana comes top to, to clear a camp, so they'll be gone, because we already pressured them away. And that's how we play the rest of this game. Essentially, we're just playing to shut out Shivana at this point. While, of course, making sure we don't, like, die to any cheeky ganks or something. Let's see what I can grab here. I'll grab Ignite. But yeah, see, we have the respawn timer on those raptors. Because we walked over them. That's all you have to do to get the respawn timer, by the way. So she got it that time, but like, you can see like how annoying we're going to be. Because we're every single time a camp is up, like here, we have the Krog's respawn timer. Every single time a topside camp is up, for the rest of the game, we're just going to take them. And what's going to happen is that Shabbat is going to fall really far behind in levels. And I am going to fall really far ahead in levels, and eventually this Pantheon will not be able to sideline against me, because I'll just be like two levels up on him. Uh, it's also important to know when you're doing this that camps respawn 2 minutes 15 seconds, so those Krogs will respawn right around the 21 minute mark. And therefore the Raptors are going to respawn right around like 20.45, so it's important to like time when you're doing stuff based on that. So yeah, check this out. We're gonna clear one wave here, and then immediately run to Shivana's Raptors. I'm gonna make sure not to, not to step over any of those obvious wards. And right on cue, the Raptors spawn. Now the Krugs are gonna spawn. This is how I get so much gold per minute in the games that I buy pet. It's this exact strategy. Any, any time that the game is stable and the lanes are even, you just play like this. This is how you use your lane prior to get big advantages. And then because we took the Raptors at um, 20 minutes, 30 seconds, they'll respawn again at 22 minutes and 45 seconds. So again, that's what we're playing around, is that timer, 22, 45. And this is the type of stuff that I always have in my head when I'm when I'm playing this kind of stuff. I don't always vocalize it, because like obviously it's a pain in the ass to vocalize it. But this is the type of stuff that you have to be thinking about if you're gonna do this. 
Anyways, you can see how fat I am. 232 farm at, at 22 minutes because of this. And Hecarim's Gromp is, yep, right there. But not going to take it right now. We're going to clear this top wave first. And in fact, we're not going to take the Gromp at all. Because guess what's spawning in 20 seconds over here? Looks like this time Shivana was ready for it. So we can't invade this time. Like, you can see how much pressure I'm putting on her. She knows that I'm cycling her raptors, so she's forced to come respond every single time now. Otherwise, she knows she'll just get cycled out of them. And in fact, she will get cycled out of them anyway, because she's going to go take those raptors, and while she's doing that, I'm going to take these frogs. Oh, maybe never mind. Nope, please still get it. And we get a kill on top of it because they just tried to fight me for no reason. What a bunch of goofballs. Anyways, we took those cogs right around, I want to say, 23.30? It might have been a little bit earlier than that. But that means that they're respawning again at 25.45, essentially. Now, unfortunately, 25.45 kind of is right around when I would need to be setting up for dragons, so maybe I don't go for the cogs this time. But it's always important, at least, to be, like, thinking about when the camps are going to respawn. And check it out, we completed the first set of, of jungle quests at 24 minutes. Purely because we know like when to cycle all the camps. Check out my level, by the way. I'm level 16. I'm so far ahead of the pace of the game right now. Like it's not like I just hit 16. I'm like I'm like halfway through 16 right now. Uh, I would consider TPing to that if Ezreal was anywhere near, but doesn't look good. Anyways, I actually am gonna push this time because Pantheon ulted to that, so he has no way to stop me from getting the start. Grab the camps. And we're level 17 now. Level 17 at 25 minutes. Um, Malzahar is... Here, we'll take Cleanse and try to kill him here. So if I can kill this guy before the dragon spawns, it'll be really big. Oh wait, that's right. Can't cleanse that. Silly me, I forgot. I missed my W. I meant to get it behind his spell shield. That's on me. Uh, I don't think we lose Baron for that. Why did I think you could cleanse Malzold? Am I just fucking stupid? Okay, well, assassinating the Kaiser is significantly easier if she's gonna do that. Okay, wait, my team is gonna kill me? Okay, holy shit. I could take Shivana's topside camp, so I'm gonna full reset here. I'm, I'm sitting on a lot of gold. I'm also gonna swap to Sleeper here. It's now that I'm level 18, like I really don't want to die, and my respawn timer is so long. Guys, I think we might finish the jungle bet this game. This almost never happens. So now we're gonna stall a little bit. We're gonna wait for my next um, trade to come up, and then we'll just take the last camp. Then I won't have to take two camps. And while we're doing that, we're of course still power farming, because I don't have enough gold to get Sterics or anything. And the last stack we're gonna take is this global red buff. And this will finish my jungle item. Alright, now I'm literally just Thanos. I did, I, know, I did more than enough damage. They should be able to get this. Whole gang was there? Yeah, but that's fine, because dragons won. That's the idea. Is that either I kill Pantheon and move in, or they all kill me and then we get soul? Anyways, when was the last time this happened in one of my games? Full build with completed jungle item. I think that's happened to me like maybe twice before. 
Usually I'm content with selling the jungle item after I get 20 stacks. This is what I like to call super mega ultra full build. I have nothing to teleport to. It doesn't even matter. The game is over. Grab flash just in case. Nice. 